But this is not about Cheryl Cole or Donna Dukes or who I'm going to vote for. This is about an effort to uh, almost lynch a person for political purposes. That's what, that's what this whole thing has been about today. Do you have a question, sir? Yes. The question is, why did you do that? Now, number two. <laughs> I'm not at the panel, sir, and uh, there are several candidates over here that have chosen to, to jump into this race. I was here all of this time, and then I haven't heard one word about the most important thing that's going to happen. This is for Representative Dukes. Um, you have been absent from most of the last two legislative regular sessions. You broke a public promise to the district. You are facing a multi-count indictment, and you have been time That's not one question. You have been fined for- making a for commentary. If you would like to ask me a question, yeah, I'm then asking the question. please Sorry. provide the question. Uh, so the question is, why should voters trust you? Why should voters trust me? Um, because the commentary that you just laid out is not true. I want to just clarify that was in my commentary. That in that question that you chose to take first is not true. People will say a lot of things when it comes down to campaigning when they would like to have the seat. I think for people to try and imply that I did not serve the district and have not served the district, it's almost an insult to the democratic principle. For 12 years, I have been on the Health and Human Services Subcommittee of Appropriations and I have fought for individuals to have health care, to have medical treatment, to get their place moved up on waiting lists when they've had catastrophic injuries. I had a catastrophic injury. And certain individuals have taken it as an opportunity to criticize when we claim to be the more empathetic and the more family-oriented party than the Republicans. Okay. Um. I wanted to answer your, your question on plans to engage the voters in District 46. Now, the assumption is, by the question itself, is that District 46 is not engaged. I remember when I won the election in November with greater than 70% of the vote, one of the media outlets said, breaking news, she won anyway. They don't even think. They don't care who they vote for. They don't do anything. That's not true. The average person in District 46 is much engaged, well uh, understands what's going on in government, and chooses when to get involved. I came here today out of courtesy, but there's been a lot of shade thrown uh, with references to change. Uh, yeah, Donald Trump talked about change. We got change. He criticized Hillary, Republicans helped, and there is change, and now nobody likes it. Because I'm in the legislature, in Congress, and in Texas, in the House, seniority is where the power lies. I have been there 22 years. I have served this district well. I have been reelected nine times, I have a 100% progressive voting record, and I do the things necessary to protect the district and the concerns. As a third generation native of this district and lived here, you can just shut up for a little while because it's more courteous for you to listen than to scream out from the audience. Lots of people can say many things, but it's about do they know how it works? I've listened to the answers. City council issues don't occur 
in the legislature, other than the legislature taking away the power of the city to be onerous either on annexation or taxation. But anything else is not done there. To get things done, you've got to be able to maneuver in the legislature. 